to another high quality episode of the Jibber Jabber podcast and our High Times series. Today we are joined by the one and only John Comerford who plays Tex in High Times. If you've still not watched High Times and you've been listening to the series, what the fuck are you doing? Go watch it, right? Anyway, Tex, top guy, top fucking character and top man by <laughs> just speaking to the man himself. He was an absolute blast. Kevin, how much fun mm-hmm. did we have today? Oh, it was amazing. We went to see him. Uh, what's the name of his his uh, hairdressers again? It's called Alice Rocks. It's in Gibson Street in Glasgow. Um, yeah. It's, it's quite well established, actually. And a lot of good fucking Google reviews. I checked that earlier on. Mm-hmm. Um, very, it's quite upmarket. Ah, it's, it's a really nice place. You can tell that when you go in there that you're, you're in good hands. Um, watch those hands may just straight in you though, right? No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was, it was actually amazing to, to meet Tex in the flesh. Um, the guy, he's got a nice bit of uh, Clive Russell look going on now um, with swept back hair and whatnot. Um, but you can still tell it's the same It's the same guy that we've seen on our screens, let's say, what, 15 years ago? Yeah, he's got that kind of, that Billy Connolly-esque windswept and interest in, Mm-hmm. You know, he's, um, he's a character. I mean, he's, it's, it's like he's, he's built this character up over the years he's had on the planet, and he seems to be comfortable. Absolutely. Now, and uh, no, we, had, we had an absolute blast talking to him. The guy's funny. Um, he was as funny off mic as he was on mic. Mm-hmm. Um, got some good stories out of him. And what's the be- one of the best things about doing what we're doing is the fact that we bring back memories that they've long forgotten when we're speaking to these mm-hmm. uh, actors and producers and stuff. We, we might mention something they're like oh my god mm-hmm. yeah i remember this time and that happens a few times in this so it's uh, pretty cool it was it was really good the, the only the only kind of downside of what we've done today we try to get fucking parked hey kevin <laughs> hi between apparently, that and hey? apparently, apparently sunday's a busy day now yeah. like, but, like back in the day sundays were just quiet sundays were where people just kind of took time to reflect on the the week's toils and and how difficult it was just to get past the Saturday. Now it's like Sunday comes and everybody's like, right, let's go to the fucking ding uh-huh. and but let's take our cars. Uh-huh. Well, we were kind of just sat in the uh, in his hairdressing salon. Do you call it a salon? If it's a guy a salon, that owns it. Right. So we're sitting there. We were actually sitting on these wee, you know, the the chairs that you sit on to get your hair cut. And so we kind of just made a little a little circle in the middle of his of his shop, and we just kind of shoot the shit which was quite cool because everybody that walked past the windows uh, kept looking in us to say like whoa what, what are they doing what are they doing it's like it's, it's a microphone mate it's not a fucking oozy calm down <laughs> <laughs> it's true but the, the thing is he was facing away from the window so you could tell that they were looking in trying to see if it was you and me that was famous <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're like oh there's a fat james mcavoy and a what what would they call you james fatavoy and fucking gerard Gutler. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we get we get right in it with Tex. Uh, I'm going to keep calling him Tex. Uh, we, we get right in it with him in this show. Uh, it's was, it was brilliant. We spent a lot of time with him. He's a really nice guy. Um, and maybe go ahead and check out some of the other stuff he's done previously as well. He, he was in River City and he also done a short film called Stone. Stone. Um, Stone. What was that other word? Stone Label. With three guys in a garden making something out of Stone. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so make sure you go and check that out. It's on YouTube. You can get it in two parts. Um, but yeah, let's let's not shoot the shit too much. Let's just put this episode out there. Uh, we were sitting in a store, so if you do hear passing traffic and whatnot, um, we did the best we could with regards to the sound. So enjoy, guys. Enjoy. John Comerford, Hi. thanks very much for giving us your time. Yeah. I know Sundays are always busy for hairdressers. <laughs> Especially during lockdown, right? Aye, aye. Um, so thanks for having us at your place to oh, talk about high times, that, that wee gem that I'd never heard of until the start of this year. Really? No, I hadn't heard of it until we had Stephen on the show and he mentioned it. And uh, we kind of just breezed past it because it, it was something that like, none of us had heard of it. And he, he mentioned something about high times. 
This was... Well, how long ago was High Times? 2004. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's scary how fast the time kind of flies in it. It gets, it gets faster as well. It's getting faster for me already. Aye, aye. Um, so yeah, Stephen mentioned it, and we just kind of breezed past it and started talking about his other stuff that he'd been in. YouTube. Aye. <laughs> aye, and we, we subsequently found out that it was on the STV player, so you can watch it legitimately. Aye, it's, it doesn't get advertised, but if you type it in, it's there. Yeah. There you go. You just get adverts on it. That's, that's but it. Speaking of advert, that's I actually saw the advert the first time around back when it came out. But as I've said to the other guys, it's not something that you could record at the time because that wasn't a thing, being able to record TV. So I never actually got a chance to see it because I didn't know when it was on. But I did always remember that, that advert where Stephen, you know, it's actually you and Stephen. And uh, you, right. you, uh, you hold the money up to, when he's saying, you can keep the change and then you hold the money up. Oh, I, I, I can't I, be too careful. It's like, that right, I change. And you know, <laughs> see forever. I used to quote that advert with my pals, right? And we'd laugh about it, right? And only after Stephen came to do the podcast and had gone, I went, wait a minute, was that actually Stephen? <laughs> and honestly, I was like, how the hell did I know that? Because I used to quote that as part, that was part of, do you know what I mean? Is that right? I change and we'd all have, have a good laugh about it. And here I am sitting in, in your hairdressers chatting to that very guy. Crazy how the world works, right? Aye. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a bit <laughs> Honestly, when, as soon as I saw you, I was like, that's definitely him. <laughs> sure, so I'm sporting, I'm sporting a bit of a beard these days. I saw a few years ago, uh, I used to, I, I don't have a city for two and a half years. Mm, yep. And uh, people used to go, you know, from us, I, occasionally people go, hey, you're the guy from High Times, and I just loved, I loved oh. it when you said that because I was so proud of it. Oh. What was the difference in feeling? Like, the quality of the writing, don't yeah. get me wrong, I've said it's a great experience, amazing experience, and um, really hard work, really hard work. Mm -hmm. um, but High Times was, the, you knew the writing was brilliant, there was hardly any acting in it, Yeah. really. Mm -hmm. and that's that's a luxury. Yeah, you don't need to pretend too much. Mm. Some people might disagree with me that, but <laughs> it's a range really good that can work for the set. Yeah, and the the, the, the cast was chosen well. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Interested everyone. I think the when it comes to the acting side and stuff like you were saying, I think um, speaking to based on who we've spoken to so far, I think Judith mm. probably had to make the most of a, a change from her normal accent to Aye. the kind of. The accent it's she funny, I was thinking about that when the kid had come down here today, <clears throat> and I was thinking how funny it would be if you started meeting the, the cast and you're all speaking like that, you know, <laughs> and everyone had, you know, would actually put on these class reaching accents. Yeah. yeah. I mean, funny thing, there was a real mix of East Coast and West Coast and mm -hmm. Yoga. Yeah. And Tony and Cora, of course, kept these post accents, mm -hmm. yep. which is great, because if, you know, if they were going to try and pretend to be Glaswegian, or vice versa, you know what I mean? It would be, it would jar. Mm. But you never thought so. I was probably moved from Edinburgh or whatever. Yeah, I never. Fife for connection. I think you wanted one. Hi, I never. I think they're both. Only quite a strong accent. Hi, hi. They're both fake, like Morris. Ah, you're right. I'm fine. Sorry, I said I'm sorry. Ah, same thing. So the East Coast, isn't it? I said Edinburgh. I think the whole West Coast is the same, so they'll go the same way. So I. The the accent she she had she said she had to really kind of work on that to, to make it sound genuine because she was brought up in the West End and Aye, it's a very different. Absolutely, absolute West End girl. Aye. 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 And a jazz singer and everything else. Yeah, yeah, really talented. Yeah, fabulous. Uh, unbelievable. Um, when did you? I mean, obviously you've done more stuff. We're going to talk primarily about high times, obviously, but you've been acting. I think according to your IMDb anyway, which isn't it always perfect. The first thing I think you appeared in was in like 1991, something like that. And I wish I could remember. I think 92 or something. Something like that. Um, what? I was 29 when I started that. Was one. So then I done, <laughs> you know, I did a lot of theatre before. Uh -huh. Right. I never went to drama school. <clears throat> but I don't consider myself an untrained actor. I mean, some would say that I went to drama school, don't have a degree, uh, therefore I won't train. But I done a lot of, I went to a lot of um, drama workshops and we took it very seriously. Um, done some great plays, worked with great directors, um, but never what you'd call professional theatre. Well, I did a lot of acts with David McKay, actually. Yep. And um, I played at Scotland Supports with the Tartan Army. <laughs> I think I'd heard about that. Was it? No, I think you're probably thinking about the uh, Orange Walk thing that John Morrison had said. 
Yeah. Uh, 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 Billy. Connolly. Uh, yeah. Right. Was it any other Sunday? Just on Saturday. Just, mm-hmm. just, uh, just, just on Saturday, Saturday or something. Aye. Like, what are you, Sunday? Sunday. Stephen Free Farm. Mm-hmm. Good morning, <laughs> Yes. Um, <laughs> anyway, I started acting then, uh, and as I say, I took it very seriously. Then TV came on, reasonably quickly. I auditioned for comedy at the BBC. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Ron Bain there, his father, was uh, my first TV. Uh, the, the, the comedy unit was really influential, actually, back in the 90s, yeah. 90s and stuff. Naked video, mm-hmm. video, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so, I'd, I'd done a TV series called Bad Boys, which was a BBC series, which was enormous. It was like 400,000 pounds an episode, 500,000 pounds an episode, short film, mm-hmm. and went network. Mm-hmm. But it got panned, absolutely. It was Ian uh, Pats, perhaps you know, writer, wrote mm-hmm. it. Yep. Uh, he wrote the, you know, and there was other writers involved, but mm-hmm. Alec Norton, you know, Tiger, I, yep. was the lead in it. Well, and Carol Howman, who used to be in a thing called Brush Strokes years ago, he was a cockney guy. And a gangster thing, a comedy gangster thing. Mm-hmm. So that had quite a good profile. I done a lot of, a lot of films. I used to say I'd, I'd done small parts in big films and big parts in small films. <laughs> I'd done a lot of short films. I was, mm-hmm. you know, I did even straight short films, you know. The first short film that we had seen you was uh, the, the one with John Rooney. Uh, the blackout, blackout, which is brilliant. You pretty much, I mean, <laughs> that that's clearly where the text character was born, and he spends all, it's, it's pretty much his whole time out. <laughs> and I like how he kind of overreacts about uh, you know, that nearly killed me. <laughs> I know, that, that was I spoke in great depth to John Rooney about that, uh-huh. right? Because that, I mean, blackout was a sense of pilot, mm-hmm. really, yeah, in some ways. <clears throat> um, my dilemma was why does the guy not just wait to bid back? Off the car drive away. Mm-hmm. Aye. So it had to be a reason for him to be so anxious. Mm-hmm. So I, I was, had a habit of creating back story. So the bad back story was that he wanted the insurance money, he wanted to claim insurance. Mm, right. And also, what's the guy that is doing the living? Chinese food. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of sad when you see it. <laughs> so then there was kind of, there was a, I, I like to think I found my pathetic bone when I came through this. I found that I played pathetic quite well. <laughs> but in this uh, true sense sense of the word, not ah, in yeah, yeah. I always felt it was a bit of insecurity. Mm-hmm. So I made this story up that he had probably his only third wife. Mm-hmm. I also then decided he was in a band <laughs> because if he also had to be somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Joins that good it's like he's a he talked of it. <laughs> <laughs> I had to make it make sense to me. Mm-hmm. So I had this idea that he really wanted to choose money, but he also had a gig, right? Right. It had to be a gig. At that point, it was a country place, I think. Uh-huh. And it was a bit of improvising in that. Uh-huh. Yeah, that plays a bit. Blackout, a lot of improvising in it. Uh-huh. But it was also brilliant with that red script. And I see a lot of improvising, there's a lot of swearing and improvising. Mm-hmm. And it was about when the policeman comes, and I said to the guy playing the policeman, I'm going to say something to you, just ignore it when I say it. And then I wrote it, and then I said, hey, I've got a gig. Um, and they, they hope they'll go, oh, right, you're in a band now. And they just look, carry his whip, they just take stuff. <laughs> and for some reason, I don't know why, I kind of really quite like things like uh, that. Because it means nothing really to anybody. Aye, uh, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so you watch it with a wee sense of satisfaction. So, yeah. It was just the fact that this guy's got a kind of ego and goes, I've got a gig. And he goes, oh, you're in a band now. It was it carries off the cameras. <laughs> Which a cop would do. No doubt. In, that, <laughs> that, in blackout, the last uh, night shoot, we, the, the light was coming up. Mm-hmm. And the script editor came to me and said, Can you, can you stop swearing as much? Right? I was very anxious, I got quite annoyed, but I've tried to explain to you. My character's meant to get more and more anxious all the time. I said, so my swearing has been building up with anxiety. You need to wait the height of my anxiety, don't swear, swear anymore, and the character's just swear. This was mm-hmm. absolutely freaking out, you know. Oh. <laughs> that was brilliant. That was, yeah, that was all night shoots, like in, mm-hmm. yeah. in Dunlama, where it's filmed, as you know. It's yeah. really sad as well. There's loads of kids running around that wasn't it? It's fucking nice. It's mental, because the, the flat swearing is empty there. 
when we shot items, it was in a different flag actually. Um, there was far, there were far less people about. Yeah. Mm. Far less. There's only like a couple of people left in those flats. You know. I um, mm -hmm. Carolyn had mentioned it in the, the last episode and uh, said that <laughs> there was incidents where. Uh, it was a, one of the junkies that lived there threatening to stab her with a needle if she didn't get if he didn't get fifty pound off her every day. And uh, it's like, hey, working around that can't it be the easiest a lot of the time. I've done it a few times actually like that. Uh, in different places. Mm. I mean the scams that you know the scams at locals clubs are really there's, there's loads of everyone wants. Aye. In fact I was doing one join John wrote a film called Love's a Four Letter Word. Mm -hmm. And I was and that <clears throat> first year filming, a junkie came in and showed we, we were filming and, and why did he, he said he hadn't been paid that day. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, extras. <laughs> Absolutely no extras used. Uh -huh. Nothing. I've not been paid and all that shouting and bawling and security and everything. But Calvin, I think Calvin was just that, so. Uh -huh. Obviously, four little old so that was all right, actually. So. Uh -huh. yeah. And they just kind of come up with a scam to just kind of. Trying to get the money out. There's other types, I mean, I've heard, years ago I heard about uh, guys who were scaffolding, the trucks for the scaffold, they start putting scaffolding up during the night. Right. And then the crew say, can, you can't do that, we need this stuff in the morning. And then they say, well, you need to cover your wages and all that. And then just go away with the scaffold. That's a general change of stuff that's happened in the past. Ah. See if they put as much kind of innovation in it, they actually get a job. Getting a real job, <laughs> aye. <laughs> but otherwise, <laughs> people just queue up at the food club, you know. All of this, such and such, you get to know. Fair dues with that, eh? Aye. I mean, <laughs> the thing is, eventually, that'll, like, depending on where these are filming, the producers and that will know it's just par for the course at some point. It's like, Aye. you're going to need to give away some fucking free food. Aye. <laughs> Aye. Producers will also use local security. Yeah. Aye. Aye. Local Aye. security is a, a loose term for Aye. gangster. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I'll cut that out. Okay, I'll cut that out. <laughs> so, <well. laughs> uh, so you you are actually by memory the first person to appear on screen in the entire series. That's right. You kicking the car door open, right. you slept in the motor. So immediately you get an idea who Tex is. Oh I those were nice boots. Did you get to keep did you keep them? They were yours. yours ah. Fucking brilliant. <laughs> do you actually like um, country music then? I like uh, I do actually. Ah. Uh, I did a lot. And yeah, I've had a lot of cowboy shot cowboy shots on today. Yeah. Uh, a lot a lot of cowboy shot. Ah. I'm gonna throw out a wee question here. We can cut it out if the answer's no. <laughs> but with you being into country music, did you did you go and see kind of country like local country bands on wee nights and stuff like that? I can you I've been away to Grand Ole Opry once for a bit of research. Mm. Uh, for something else. I was just wondering if you ever seen my uncle's band. He's away now, so I was just wondering it was in a know. band called Ramblin' Fever. It was a four piece uh, they just did covers. Um, but they were good back in the day. They, they toured all over all over the country. I didn't. I've never been there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Aye. Ah, well, well, cut it. We're not cutting it. So and that was it. I, I remember with John. Uh, I came up with this thing about a guy being in the country. Uh, I remember seeing John get a wee chat. It was after the reading. The read mm -hmm. No, that was was that was that black thing. Was that? Yeah, we heard there was yeah, actually a lot back then, right? Right, right. So, I wonder if the country music thing was there. But no, the, for me, the country music thing was quite important again because there's a lot of pathos mm -hmm. country music in that kind of. Right. You know, kind of. It's tragedy. Right. And it's funny stuff as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's kind of the, the thing that links both you and Cora's uh, character together was the, the love of country music. So, you're delivering a Chinese to her fella Go and then that. discovering that, oh, well, wait a minute. Because the first time you actually see Tracy on screen, there's country music playing in the background, and that's her mum. That's that's that, huh? See, that's the clever wee thing. Like risky things, uh, things uh, in it that, that, that you wouldn't do now. Oh, that's, that goes through with it saying, but anyway, that's really, yeah. school, that's something we'll come away on. We'll get to that way. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so how, how did you get involved with Blackout and High Times? Uh, obviously, the High Times would have uh, came up, uh, like, not, well, I basically, as a direct result of Blackout, I'd assume. Or did you have to audition again? I think I met Joan Rooney through Vince Hunter, Vincent Hunter. Mm -hmm. why, why did I think that? Because right now I don't see the link that much. 
I don't know. I, I've never got a clue why I ended up black. Is it a black I don't know. I, I think I did. I think I auditioned for it. Oh. Uh, it was mentioned that um, one of the other people that was up for the role of Tex was uh, Gavin, Gavin Mitchell. Mitchell. He was up for Tex as well. Did you know Bobby the Barman? Can you imagine that? I never knew that. The thing is, if you look at Bobby as Bobby the Barman with a with a mullet mm -hmm. and the denim and all that, it, it could have worked. But you, know, did, you did it better. Uh, you did it better. Uh, no, I can't imagine that. You know, Gavin, he would have. Uh, he'd have been good for that. Uh, 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 not as good as you, but you, should, uh, uh, you fucking nailed it. You I like to think I created the character. <laughs> you did. You did. Like. Who's, who's this John Comerford guy? I used to have that orange t-shirt and I don't, I don't want to, I love that orange, the Chinese t-shirt. Oh aye, 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 what was written on it? it was, was it the name of the Chinese? Lucky Star, it was the Lucky Star, wasn't it? Just generic Chinese restaurants. What kind of who designed that? It was one of the costume girls, boy friends or something. Aye. Weird one. As it was a very orange t-shirt. I loved it. Aye. <laughs> it's kind of slim. People kept saying, your hair, your hair's dark in it. My hair was actually quite grey. Aye, but it was, it was short. Because it was chilled. It was because aye, of those elements of grey in it for sure. Aye, aye. Your character always reminds me a little bit of my dad. It reminded all my cousins of my dad. Aye, mm, right. Wow. That's the first time my dad did see it. That was one of the great regrets because he would have loved it. Mm -hmm. you know? He would have loved it. Um, uh, but all my cousins went, John, that's just your dad. And I, I remember watching it once and it was. I actually see when I take my trousers down and just examine my penis. <laughs> and I thought, that's my dad, yeah. So uh -huh. Just to, to shape my shape. <laughs> well, I, think... I was a lot taller, a lot more handsome. <laughs> that's the beauty of uh, John's writing, is I think every character in that show reminds you of someone you know. You well, know I mean? Jimmy yeah. Grant, who was, you know, the old uh, uh, John Morris's dad, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. Aye. He was my dad's double when my dad was ill. Aye. And he walked in the room, I, I honestly got, it was like a shiver ran right through me. Wow. I then made a film about my dad and Jimmy played my dad in it. Oh, wow. So I got Jimmy to play, play my dad in the short film. Mm -hmm. He was five in it. <laughs> he played the wee boy. John Hanna was in it. You know John Hanna? Oh, aye, aye. So John played the kind of wee character, if you like. Jimmy played my dad. Yep. And so did you direct this? Was this? Was this yeah. When you check it out. And directed. What's it called? It's called Stone, S T O N E. Right. Um, and can we find that on, it's the, on YouTube? It's on YouTube. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, ah, we'll definitely check that on YouTube. There's two halves in YouTube, it's ah. absurd. Craig Armstrong composed the music for it. Do you know Craig Armstrong? No, it's not one of them. Craig Armstrong done music for Moulin Rouge, oh, right. uh, The Gatsby, Ray. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, he's, he's a class region from, uh, he's from Shells in the East End. Right. He's one of the biggest composer, film composers in the world. Wow. He's just done a Disney film, new Disney film. No, it's Ivan or something. Oh, Ivan, Ivan the Great. Ivan oh, the, right. It's about the a gorilla, gorilla ah. with Brian Cranston. Right. I was about to say, I mean, if you've done the music from Mulan, that's like the only decent thing about it. Right. <laughs> oh, he's, done, he's done music for this. So now he's done, I mean, he's done uh, Elizabeth Golden Age, he's done music for the Batman film. Brilliant. I mean, he's world well, renowned. Oh, then I got him to do the music for the ah, film. Yeah, but Jimmy was like, first time I showed my mum a rough cut of the film, she watched the first minute and a half and she started crying at it. Ah, she couldn't watch it right. at all because there was lines in it my dad said and mm -hmm. everything else. And I, Jimmy lived in London. Mm -hmm. Jimmy's dead now. Uh -huh. But to get him up from London or to tend him up, mm -hmm. I gave him money, so, and uh, I said I'd take him my Celtic game. Right. He was a big Celtic fan, right. and I don't mean get, get schmaltz in it, but I was regret he'd never take my dad to a Celtic game, because uh -huh. when we boys used to say, you, you take me to games when you grow up, never did, but I took Jimmy, right. mm -hmm. and uh, it was, it was really quite emotional actually, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and he knew it the last time we'd be a fat kid, uh -huh. and we were uh, before he left, he came just give me a minute. He just stood at the front of the stadium and he just gave me his, his wee bit. Oh. And then he, he wasn't dying or anything, but yeah. he was an old old man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he was back in London, you know. <coughs> oh, that's amazing. The great old guy, that's a share that. Yeah, he gave him a nice wee finger. And, and he was and really good as well on the show. He was bloody brilliant. Yeah, he was. He was in the Sunset Song. Oh, 
Det er rigtig nogle fag. Which is Louis Classic Kevin, that's a classic Scottish thing that he's famous for that. I love the part where he, he smacks Alison Peebles and then as John walks in, he's like, that bastard did that baby! I think, I think it's, it's funny, but it's tragic as well. It's, 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 it's so know, accurate for I, I knew dimension. people with the, the film that yeah, it was Alzheimer's, mm-hmm. was that? Yeah. was portrayed very well. Mm-hmm. I knew people who had new people with Alzheimer's yeah. and they'd done it justice. Yeah. Which is really important. You can't go to conditions like that, you know. Mm-hmm. And not do it justice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And not take it very, very seriously. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Aye. It's, um, I mean, it's a, a testament to the writing as well, but the performances, mm-hmm. real, the, the performances for everybody in the show yeah. complement the writing perfectly. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there's, like one of, this is one of your lines that he always says is, you stick it up your fucking cul-de-sac. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it just, it looks like it rolled off your tongue like you say that every day of the fucking week. <laughs> I flat up your cul-de-sac. <laughs> the, another, another of my favourites so when Jimmy's sitting playing the guitar and you're like, that's what you call a bum note. I like to think you really farted there. I don't know what to do. It's a funny story. So, I had to fart and I'm a pretty good person, but the fart on demand is quite good. So we were sitting on the bus, sitting in the, you know, the eat for dinner and then eat for lunch and the uh, coach thing. And uh, one of the brothers would say, Joe, that's the fart tape, the, the fart tape. I can say it with farts on it. I get that for you every day. He'd farts on it. And then me, Wally Harris, where is that? Me, this guy, Wally I think it was Wally. And there were a few of us, when Ed sat, it sat, when it's on, he had a car. We had a cassette. What is that? That's a cassette. We put the table on the table and the place, I said, like this, and he goes, <laughs> and then he goes, <laughs> <laughs> so they start, and he goes, 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 and he it's a bit wild, isn't it? See his analysis. He's fat. Don't say That's a big guy's fat. <laughs> but I don't feel that that one would come to text. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh. it. Well, that's the one. I dare you. That's not enough for a bundle. <laughs> Realistically, you should have just got one of those, you know, I think it's on Home Alone, the wee cassette tapes where he talks about it. I just recorded your name for it. Really, yeah. Oh, oh, perfect. You wouldn't have the quality, though. Uh, the Toss Boys were terrible. <laughs> <laughs> quality was shite. Quality was shite. I walked into that one. Oh, man. Yeah. Honestly, I'm going to get four of these sitting in this guy's BMW. Listen to Fart. Can you imagine somebody walking past there and seeing four guys seriously <laughs> so analysing a tape of Fart? <laughs> <laughs> no way! <laughs> the mother, because she starts on the and she's like, Hey, man, how do you start in? Nah, nah, nah. Nah, nah, nah. nah. Oh, nah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the X Factor. <laughs> For fuck's sake. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's a no for me. But it's, it's, a, it's an absolute gift to be able to follow. Just to, to, to ask you your character to do this. Oh man. Yeah. It, it, was the, it was the double lift. I mean, you just lifted your entire body up. Uh-huh. It almost looked like you were struggling to kind of get it out. You had to kind of <laughs> get your leg and kind of. The stuff on here, some people are like, oh. No, the lean. Uh, oh, I know the lean. Uh. <laughs> the lean. You thought, oh, fix my. Usually, I'm not. 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 So do you okay. fart? No, well your chair's fucking rotten. <laughs> <laughs> the lean, I love this. Like, we need to create a poster that just has like an analysis of a fart on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, I just love the idea of four guys sitting like critiquing fart, a tape of farts. Uh, I that's mean, a, we get in trouble good, for that. That's a good living. <laughs> <clears throat> see that, like, in comedy particularly, you see about a really serious, serious debate mm-hmm. about something that's meant to be funny. It's going to be very, very funny. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, you, you would have spent most of your time on that show acting with 
Cora and Paul, Paul McCall. Mm -hmm. um, there's, all, there's a few actors I've never, I've never worked with. Tom and who, who was that? I worked with the boys. Ah, I know. Mm. That's right, because they didn't tend to come. Nah, yeah. there, there's some stuff at the door. Mm -hmm. like, it was just, just the delivery, I think. Interaction, ah. it was, you know. Yeah. You know. At the blackout, I suppose they walk past and you kind of chat yeah, a wee bit, yeah, but yeah. Nah, that's right, unfortunately. That seems to be yeah, yeah. That's no, why we needed But that's why the dynamic, the, 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 there's little groups of dynamics, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, that's that's how life really is. You, you don't you don't know everybody just because somebody you know knows them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's it, it's good as a as a good bit of realism that's left out of soap operas and stuff. Soap operas, everybody knows everybody. Uh, they all so interact all the time, enough. and they're all at the pub all the time for some reason in soap operas. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It never works. It's quite some uh, weird thing. Uh, but <clears throat> I so working with you two most of the time. Um, how how was that for you, for you? Paul and I got on brilliantly. I loved them with bits. Mm. And then we still used to keep in touch with you about stuff, you know. But I really liked Paul. Mm. And we could have had to off, I, th I think. And you so could see that chemistry on, on screen. Uh, Until you yeah. sniffed his burnt snickers. <laughs> <laughs> A wee bit of me wanted to see, see the punch. Do you know what I mean? The I punch know. happens off camera. Um, A wee bit of me wanted to see it. You know the line I said in that? Aye. Uh, uh, wasn't scripted. Uh, we heard that. I don't think John Rooney was that. He was too. That no, I, I was fuming. Were you as fuming? fuming. Well, ah. well, yeah. I was, it's a funny story actually. No, John Rooney was not happy. Uh, not I told all. him. Uh. Right? And I still being a snitch. <laughs> Callan Sinclair kid said to me, there's a, there's a thing in it, John, that I really didn't think would work. And I didn't want it in it, but you, you made it. Um, would you call it? He, she said something you'd done it so beautifully and made it work. And I was like, what about was that? She says, maybe you sniff the pants and you see the fannies are great, aren't they, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, something like that. Fannies, they're just fannies brilliant, or something like that. It's the thing about fannies. I mean, <laughs> really, I mean that, surely that's not in it. She said, yeah, you know, I, mean, I said I didn't, I, I didn't want in it. Was just, that was just a practical joke <laughs> for the director's benefit, uh, for David's benefit. Uh -huh. Davey saw it in a, 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 a toilet wall, written in a toilet wall. In the <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and it was a kind of wee joke he had between him and his girlfriend or something. Mm. And she put, I only done that once, that take, all the other uh, takes was just the pants. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, he, and he said it was as a laugh. Yeah. And I'd done it and they kept it in. I don't mean to sound sort of too serious, but I feel it said, the text when they say something like that. Mm -hmm. I felt he wasn't sleazy, I felt quite strongly about this, that he mm -hmm. was a bit of a ladies man and all that, but he wasn't as sleazy. Aye. And I felt he was end up for George Chodrick, he was fuming. Aye. So we're going to a party the next night. Is this Davy's engagement party? Mm -hmm. Oh, we heard about that day. And John we? said he was going to uh, have a serious work on about it. And I walked in ready for this confrontation and I started laughing and carrying on. They're like, what's your mother? That's fine, just leave it on. Alright. It too, yeah, master. It too. <laughs> and then it's, just, it's a line, I mean, the guy shouted it to me in a garage. <laughs> <laughs> See, seriously. <laughs> and then I remember it was a me and his mom, right, my ex wife were having a bit of an argument. And I kind of went up the pub, the kind of rough local pub up in Bay Hill. I marched up there, and I'm standing there fuming. And this guy gave me guidance. Oh! <laughs> you sniffed the pants and hide him! I'm sorry, I thought that. <laughs> <laughs> so I was kind of. You know, that's the thing about being an actor, right? Just <coughs> one wee line or something Aye. simple. Well, can... thankfully, I mean, there's, there's obviously been four killed or something. You're going to get enough all of that. Ah, yeah. 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 You don't do that. Every ah, time he does it, anything. Oh, <laughs> God, I can imagine. <laughs> and to, to, to speak on behalf of, of someone watching it, I loved that bit. I had, well, it had me pissing myself. I was like, to be honest, when it, when it was broadcast, I mean, I okay. <laughs> no, I mean, I was being a bit. I, I mean, I suppose when you're in the thick of it and you're trying to kind of become would, this character. It would still have worked without it. 
Oh, I mean, just, just the, just the, I mean, it was so euphoric, it was so euphoric, it was like, it was like you're taking a snort of fucking DMT or something, <laughs> it was just like, mm. <laughs> I took a tattoo because of the clean. It's like, you didn't know what that in fish paste or something. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the cool thing about it though, really, is that um, at that point where you've kind of been caught, it's like, well, I'm here anyway. What can what can you really say? I might as well just say the first thing that comes to my head, you know. And I, I thought that was quite for me. I, I really enjoyed that. <laughs> I no, no, that. Be, I'm glad you said no. Aye, to, to see, be honest, I totally. Aye, ah, in, in hindsight, yeah. <laughs> I mean, as it as it one of those, there there are many moments of that show that you like. You know, if I go to someone, you need to watch High Times, which is something I've been saying a lot recently. I say you need to watch High Times, <laughs> and I explain these characters. <laughs> Between that and uh, Rona, a dubby on, on the Bible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but these these are the things that we kind of. This is how you sell how I sell the show to people. I'm like, you need to watch it. There's these characters, in it, and I always say about the sniff in the pants. You know the whole. Yeah, you've never gave me an orgasm. And how long we've been together? I've been again, you weren't it, boy. Right, <laughs> just all that, all that stuff is just proper banter. It's a shame that it's not more recognised, like stuff like Still Game is. You know, gone in all day that and you, for your good eye. You know, the whole I mean, you probably others have probably said to you, if ten you put it out, it was just unbelievable. Uh, it was half ten. Uh, I think was it was late. It, it was half ten, eleven. Was it on a Tuesday night or something? Well? I think it was a Thursday. Thursday. Most people are just going to go to their bed. Aye, that's true. They, and think, oh, they don't even want to watch something like that. Aye. Aye. And and there's like, a whole load of stuff. I mean, how long it took to make the site series? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Um, how yeah. long it took them to put it out? To, to make it, even to even to oh, even make it. it. <coughs> even to well, see, we've had kind of two conflicting things, right? So there's a lot of people, um, a lot of the actors and cast and John Rooney himself, feel that it wasn't treated the way it really should have been. But then Carolyn, on the other hand, who was in the thick of it, says, of you know, they had it on their boards, that they actually absolutely adored the show. Do you know what I mean? Inside the building, probably. Aye. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know who's allowed in there? Oh, I don't you know. know. It's uh, yellow security. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of those things which is quite a shame that it's not something... Like I said, when the adverts went out, my, my mates and I were, we were, you know, we were quoting a teacher, so it had something there. And I was... I was some people at the time compared it to Shameless. It is really that. Do you know what it is? I think it would be our, it's a Scottish Shameless without the grittiness. I, I think, I think, I, I, sometimes Shameless was. Shameless. I've never watched. I've shameless never watched would go shameless. somewhere that High Times wouldn't, for sure. But they do have elements of each other. Just Shameless is more, uh, you're going you're gonna to get real scummy, <laughs> scummy stuff yeah, in Shameless. Yeah. But with high times, it was more real. Well, I like. I mean, one of the things that I liked, and I said it to, to you before. I was at first. I said, I think there's there's only see there's two folk in the program that you shouldn't like, and it's Tex and uh, Janet for what they've what they've done. But when you watch it again, you're like they're not bad people no, at all. I, I feel very strongly about that. Not not one of them's a bad person. I, I just, didn't think the Tex was a bad person. No, absolutely not. Because we actually had that debate. Because we said. Hmm. Who is the, who's the dickhead in it? And you were like, I think Texas character, but I was like, no, really. When you look at no, I think that's what the, it's the obvious choice. Aye. Um, I played that character a few times. I played that character in other city, really. Aye. No, just it was a kind of a womanizer, a likable guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I always felt that in other cities, real people go, "You're a sleazebag, no? He's not sleazebag." Well, if you look at look at the just funny. He's, <laughs> he's driven by insecurity. He was, oh, you know, aye. For me getting that stupid analytical way, but he drank me since security, he wasn't drunk by confidence. No. He was drunk by a lack of confidence. I think he hid behind that kind of... A lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> I think he hid behind that bravado of being a yes, guy's guy as well. absolutely. Right? And if you look at, when you actually look at, if we go on statistics here, right, he'd done a lot more decent things than they did. They? Both circumstance led him and Janet's character to come together, right, and something that they both were not all that sure about, because text didn't they exactly like, Come on, and he even says it, I don't remember twisting your arm, I right? Agree. And and when you look at what Tex actually does, he sets Janet up after her life kind of goes down the shitter. He's not too, he, as much as he's still quite boyish and being like, you know, we should do this, 
he still gives her, her boundaries. There comes, uh, he offered his, Tex offered his money to, to set her up. When Jimmy's got other plans after it all kind of goes, you know, you put, in order to spare how Jimmy feels to save him that guilt, he goes and sleeps in his car but pretends he's staying somewhere else. He's not a bad guy. No, Circumstances. No, I, I, I did feel very strong with it. It's true to life. I think it's because I didn't want to dislike the character either. Right, aye. Exactly. I mean, I think that, I said the other play, doing a play about Scotland fans, mm. if you play a serial killer, you, you empathise with some of the characteristics, or yeah. you know, the, the background, or the, you know, the backstory, I've mean, led them there, it could be very, very sad. Or mm -hmm. or I couldn't, I couldn't empathise with a Scotland fan at all. Uh -huh. There was nothing like it about being a Scotland fan, because all you know is they get beaten and then they sang songs and celebrated. Mm -hmm. That was difficult to play. Uh -huh. So trying to find something in that to, yeah. to sort of I don't relate to. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whereas somebody like Tex, I could, I could relate to no problem. Yeah, well, I'd like to say I created that wee bit as well. Ah, yeah, John Rooney, of course. I mean, that's like, the great John Rooney. What, mm -hmm. did, what, did you, what did you bring? <laughs> yeah, the great John Rooney, we'll say that again. <laughs> what, what did you bring to like from yourself, like, was there any parts of you you're like, I'm, I'm put, I need to put this in the text? Apart from obviously the the music and the boots. <laughs> sex appeal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sex appeal. <laughs> the sadness. Um, there was a. I, was I, a, I thought he was pretty, pretty sad, eh? There was an undertone of and loneliness. Aye, that's Absolutely. right. No, I think it was. I, I, when I see pathetic, it means a few cents of I mean, 43, sleeping on his nephew's couch. I know, that was a lady thing, thing. Aye. <laughs> Aye, wasn't it? It was the third marriage. Um, <laughs> you... My marriage was four of them, actually. Uh -huh. I was a young man that, wow. to, be, to be honest. But in June, it was, mm -hmm. it was, it was, it was a lot of parallels, so we see. Uh, right. <laughs> so, I, know. I don't want to go there, I won't go there too much, but... No, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I'm joking, the first scene was really sexy. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it's, if you look closely, you can see it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you've got a wee look in your eye. Uh, a, there is a puppy dog kind of feel to Tex's character. It's like somebody... Uh, oh, yeah, that's what I'm he, he didn't have a swagger. No. He had a bit of a pretend. Mm -hmm. he, wore the he wore the gear. Mm -hmm. He didn't walk the walk, really. Uh, you know yeah. what I mean? He wasn't even dead. There was that kind of arrogance. There was no arrogance. No. Well, that wasn't my son. No. No, no he, just, he just floated, floated by. Uh, was, uh, um, he delivered uh, some of the funniest moments as well in high times. Just even when he's sitting there eating the prawn crackers. <laughs> and, and you can hear uh, Mick Tony, he's like, I ordered it an hour ago! And then your phone goes, he's just like, oh, I'm coming! And sort of fat yeah. boy's wanting his dinner! And you, you put his prawn crackers back in the bag! <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's the wee, it's the wee details yeah, in that show. It's John Rooney's detail. <clears throat> yeah. it's that's what I forget about, I think. I, I missed. Those little details. Unbelievable. Yeah, that, that was one of the, one of the, again, first episode, you meet Tony on the stairs, you meet uh, Frank on the stairs, and I didn't even get the fact that Frank was knackered gone downstairs. Until about four four episodes in, and you told me, and I was like, "Oh, I didn't really get it." Now I was in the scene. <laughs> <laughs> See, I thought you, I thought you looked downstairs, yeah, and he was gone, him. just going, "Where the fuck did he, he go?" Because he, like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was not. So I had to stop for a breather. He's voiced it. I'm good. At, I'm, I'm all right at that. <laughs> um, there's a. Did you spoke to Tony? Not yet. No, no. I, I sent him an initial text message. Oh, yeah. He said he said that he, would, he was going to do it, and uh, Stephen gave us his number. But I've no had any back him yet. I'll keep trying. The, one of the good things that we've realised as well, from I mean, we've spoke to quite a majority of the cast now. Um, everybody has such a love for each other still. It's like I, a, uh, do you know? It's like a band that got together. Tell me, just who I talked to today. I've said that we were going to do this, and they said they. And do you think you still got on with casting? I think everyone got on with it. I'm still really close. Mm -hmm. right. Aye, that's, that's something like I said, we hear yes. that time and time again. Um, but I mean, even going back to you, we've swung to a lot of people on it now, but even uh, we Robin, who played Baby Chloe, she's, mm -hmm. she reached out to us as well. Yes. Aye, she's nice. 16 now. And she plays. And she's a, a musician. She's actually an incredible singer. She's a, have you heard any of her music? No, no. She's yet. actually really, really talented and she plays piano and guitar as well. She's wow. super talented. And she's actually from the same place as the McCall brothers. Casper. Mm -hmm. And her her agent is Alan McCaffrey's mum. 
Yeah. Alma Catholic is mum. Mm -hmm. I forgot his eyes. I didn't think she was an agent. I ain't that. Crazy, yeah. <laughs> These are all still kind of interlinked. Talk to Alan. No, well, I've, I've been texting Alan. Um, fingers crossed we get a, something set up with him. Um, but, you know, he, he's one that we really would love to speak to oh, as well. Because be his character as Jake as well. Again, like almost like Tex, he's a, he's a puppy dog. There's a puppy dog element. Do you know, I, I've always said that uh, his character would have been better off in life had he not met Rab. He, well, that's the dynamics, that's yeah, that, that. His parents would have told him to stay away from that Rab Campbell. The, the <laughs> ideal scenario is we'd get the two of them together for That'd be amazing. one episode. The boys are the core, the, they're the core of the programme. Yeah. I don't want to say the boys, but Alan and, and uh, Paul. Yeah. The programme involved in it. Aye. They could have been a spin off on that. That's a I Kevin and Perry Lodge kind of thing. I was talking about that. That would have been amazing. Well, that was actually a script that we. We got sent by John Winnie not right, too long ago. Going to have some yes, have you read it? No. Oh my God, I asked John to send it to you. It's, it's unbelievable. I was impressed myself. I need to get back in touch with John, actually. Aye, ah, he's, he's, he plays a lot of golf. I've been chatting oh, no, about him recently, aye. Uh, good guy. Uh, he's, he's a uh, good golfer. Ah, uh, well, but the amount of times he plays it, I can't <laughs> imagine that he's not. He plays it, he plays it for Briggs, doesn't he? Is that where he plays? That's where my wife's from. Oh, oh, nice. Aye, but he, John, for, for such a writer um, that, that's just, for a writer that gets it right. She's changed just so he's not right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've missed a lot of them. Oh, well, I, I can give you his uh, we'll, we'll, we'll check, make sure it's the right one. <laughs> um, but for a writer that, that's so talented, and any time anybody talks about High Times, the first thing they'll bring up is just what a genius writer he was. Absolutely. Still is. Um, it would be amazing to see him doing more, but I think, I think he got, kind of got a, a bad, bad taste in his mouth. We've done some other city as well. Aye, that's right. Um, yeah. It would be amazing to see, like, to see John do more high times. Obviously, it did end after series two. Where, where did you see Tex going from series two? I can never. I couldn't imagine he'd end up with Janet. That no, was, that was definitely not, not a chance. keeper. That was a. Um, I don't know. Did was it Janet? They got a, did she get a new house? Yes. She got it, it was through, through Texas cycle. Crazy, crazy massive man. Yeah. I was going to be going in Thursday night. Aye. Mm -hmm. We've heard a that she's actually good pals with Cora. It's my mate's, it's my mate's, my best mate's girlfriend. No way. <laughs> and she's good <laughs> pals with Cora still, right? Aye. Because they were better, they were sharing a flat together. Yeah. I, I, well, at that know, time. Yeah. Oh, I did, I she was telling us how both of them were naked putting on fake tan. <laughs> <laughs> I see her in these all the time. Aye. All the time. Wow. She's a great pal. That's brilliant. Do you ever talk about high times? Do you talk about it as a well, Sunday? I said it, you guys were doing that. Oh, nice. That would be awesome. Good kind of. Good kind of. She'd be a great chat. Oh, absolutely. I've heard. Chat with you. She's just great. Yes, we've, we've kind of stuck pretty, pretty stringently to the mm -hmm. main cast, but uh, it could be it. But she, oh, she was, she, I mean, she's very memorable because she was fucking bananas. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> 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 you're just like, all right then. I was just like, it's like you want me to go or something. No, I'm not. Phone your taxi. <laughs> Oh, that was, that was funny. We we'll do this again sometime. Oh, aye. So I just go brush my teeth. Remember that? Something like that, I'll go take a water or something like that. I didn't mean right. Aye, aye, that's, that's <laughs> a little bit of fun. You kind of see them in the, in the text. She's wearing the big one hat. It's that shag pad you've got, that fucking red velvet room. That's shocking. <laughs> the mirror on the ceiling. That must have been half the budget for the episode, that, that room. Oh. Uh, that, aye, it's... You do get the wee incidental characters that come in and make a big impression, aye. and she was definitely one of them. The top boy. Aye. Aye. The, what's his name again? It's Tr Tracy's fella. That's right. What was his name again? Kyle. Kyle, that's it. Kyle. He was a knob. And he got around. He's he's a, if he was going to get you a rape alarm, he could have engraved it. <laughs> aye, he was brilliant. Oh. Aye, he was so <laughs> <laughs> when Stephen just kicked him in the arse. <laughs> uh, what did you think about the dynamic between Tracy and Stephen? Well, Tracy and uh, Rick, Rick. that was risky, actually. Uh, I think. I think. I thought the game was very well done. Nah, the Scrabble game was. Oh, I was <laughs> pissing <laughs> much. Kitty Fiddler. And on the news, it's like a man was shanked to death and <laughs> scalped. <laughs> so <touching> children. <laughs> and he's like, do it. That's good. I think what it was. It was one, again, this this was one of my favourite lines. It was when it was Alan had said to, um, so I keep saying that, I keep saying the real names. Jake had said to Rab, Rab, uh, and he's like, I don't know if she stays here the night. And she, he's like, can she fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like the, the the complete. It's just a natural way you would say something like that if you were worried. 
about your situation and where it might go. And can she fuck? There's no thought process. <laughs> Aye. Aye, just boom. Nah. <laughs> I think, do you know, a lot of credit goes to Stephanie's character, Tracy, as well, because there's, there's a certain maturity about that wee girl in that show when she's young. There's a, there's a real maturity about her that doesn't, when she's with rap, you don't notice the age difference. Do you know what I mean? And we see her more than anybody evolve from series one to series two. She kind of gets a, you know what I mean? What was her real age again? Was she, she was maybe 15. Uh, she's 18, she was 18 or 19, that's all. Ah, well, like, I think uh, she was like 15 in the show. I know, in the show. Aye, aye, actually, I'm, sure, she's, I'm sure she's aye. kind of 31, 32 now, so aye, that would have been, she would have been a bit 18. She would have been a bit 30. What? There's a thing about the girls on High Times, man. None of them have aged, right? <laughs> That's true, by the way. Unbelievable. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> all, the, all the guys look old as fuck. <laughs> God, we even were. It's <laughs> <laughs> been successful. <laughs> no, honestly, we've we've spoken to pretty much all the females in the pub bar, Stephanie, and every, we've done Zoom calls with them. And Alison as well looks uh, younger now than she did on the bloody really? show. It's, I was like, what? It's madness. Yeah. I don't know, it must have been good no, care. Good care really but <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, Paul was sporting a, a very, very locked down beard when we spoke to him. Uh, he, actually, he, actually, he actually insulted his oh. hairdo from series two. Which you done? <laughs> I yeah. say because I think Paul had asked us. He's like, do you think the show's kind of dated? I said it's fine apart from your fucking hair. He <laughs> was like, shut it, I love that. I, I, I was blonde and short. Always had a bit of Cobainian look about it. Ah, that's right. Aye. Yeah. Aye. And he done it sang a song for it. That's right. Aye. aye. I mean, hey, sorry, red tape. Aye. Pretty much all the guys. And girls in that show are musically talented. Do you I do any music? Not at all. You're selling that. I love music. Yeah. But I, I don't have any musical talent whatsoever. You just go to the scissors then? Aye. So did the scissors, <laughs> did they, becoming a barber, was that something you'd done Hair previous? Dresser. Hairdresser. Hairdresser. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Since I was 16. Since I was 16, right, so that was already, already a thing. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Aye, because I mean, I think you'd done, was it just Paul's hair on the show? Yeah. Aye. I mean, I noticed that, um, Judith actually had set a, set a different hairdo in the second series. Did you have no, any do that? Nothing to do with it. Do you know she actually looks like that now? I suppose you've done it now, right? Aye. She looks like second series. Uh, no, I guess this was during lockdown, so she'd done it herself. Right. She aye. looked just aye. like. Aye. Aye. I was the, the wee short kind of. Uh, I, mean, I, 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 know Jude, I know Judith's dad and, and you have a lovely, lovely mum. Aye. She's like sad and lost her mum. Aye. A really lovely family. Uh, Judas was, mm. she was really nice, we had a good long conversation with Every, everybody, I mean all you guys on that show, just brand new people, just really nice folk there. Yeah? I think you just, <laughs> because I mean, you see people on TV and people in films and uh, you just assume that they're a different breed all together but then you meet them and, like yourself, you're just, you're just folk and, that, and it's something that it, it constantly surprises us. Mm -hmm. how, uh, that there were a couple of well-known, actual, actual well-known actors, mm -hmm. and people would say, he just talks away, didn't he, quite the thing, and I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck did you expect him? <laughs> 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 it's you true, know what I mean? It's true, we expect him to walk in with like a <laughs> fucking <laughs> beanie light behind him and stuff. Aye. Yeah, I was like, I was really bad with John, uh -huh. playing Dr. Phil, that's the way he's Dr. Phil, but uh -huh. people actually said, he's just, uh, he's quite down to earth, he's like a normal person, oh, fuck it, mate. <laughs> I reached out to John's agent about coming on the podcast a while ago. Um, I think it was actually when, when, I, when I reached out to Stephen as well, because it was for the wee man. Right. It was just, it was, that was what kind of brought my attention to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just never heard him back. I was like, bastard. I'd love you, to speak you. to John. <laughs> 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 Two thumbs up on that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a real highlight for us to do this. I mean, because we, we watched High Times for the first time with adult eyes, as we are now, right? Oh, yeah. And, you know, just, I have watched that series, both series, 12 episodes, about six, seven times. Seriously? Yes. Genuinely. Oh, honestly, you know this what? Is the ones. Mate, I, and I can't even, <laughs> there's not even a point where I get bored of it. Or I'm like, oh, do you know what I mean? Sometimes you'll watch something, like, I'm not watching that again. Wife will say, let's watch this movie. I'm like, oh, I watched that about four years ago, it's too recent. <laughs> this series, I can just binge. You know what I mean? I can just binge over and over again. We've probably watched it more than you fucking acted in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's well written. And you you know, quote nice to me in the text. I've never heard that. The way I love it as well is just 
the, the, it's so real to what we are as Scottish people, right? Um, yeah. The characters are so real. Their, their backstories are people we all know. They're, they are us in certain many different ways, you know? And it's just kind of nice to see that reflected properly. And it's quite a strong social statement as well, mm-hmm. isn't it? Yeah. The, the, Absolutely. The, the, yeah. The it, it shows you that, that there are people that, that live in this, these circumstances yeah. that want to get out of it, and there's people that are quite happy mm-hmm. just in their wee in their wee. Bar. That's what was unusual, I think, is it wasn't short. There was no studio work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so on location. Actually, each of us had the road the road and flat. Aye. They weren't all changed about. Aye, that was their that was their house. That was their house. Judge upon the rosa. Aye, eventually. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, man. It's just one of those things, isn't it? Aye. Um, with regards to the, the way Tex kind of carries himself in the first series and the second one, there's not a lot of changing in, in the way that he kind of goes like you kind of see all the different characters kind of move. Tex kind of stays kind of true to, to who he is without being, like you said, a, a sleaze. Um, I think for, for us, it was kind of- If you think he was sleaze, it's fine by me. No, but <laughs> it no. comes straight up. You, you do, if you was to describe Tex, we'd say, okay, the sleazy one. But when you really dissect it. I, 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 used, I thought of him as really a local social club. Mm-hmm. Like a Biner's Club or a, mm-hmm. guy. you know, the, the Royal Legion or something like that, the RAF Club or something. Aye. The guy over there that thinks he's, mm-hmm. thinks he's got his gift and he's Aye. getting on a bit and he dresses the way he used to dress years ago. He's a little bit like that. I think I he's think like that local Aye. Lothario. Well, everybody oh, knows who he is. Everybody in, knows him. In the social club, you know. And he probably does deliver Chinese. Well, that's what he says to, to Janet. Another you know, Paul, documentary or something? Paul delivered Chinese, did he? Did he? Aye. Paul, 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 Paul to, delivered Chinese. I don't think like he mentioned that. I know. I can't years ago. Did he? Did he? Did he? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know when we spoke to John. Remember we spoke to John and uh, he, uh, he he, he'd done, done it the night before we spoke to him. Oh. <laughs> John Rooney. Honestly. He was helping aye. a mate out. Aye. I, get, I don't know if a mate couldn't do it and he was like, oh, ah, I'll do it for you. He's just Chinese. The Chinese that you were delivering in the show, was that actual like hot Chinese food, or was it? Actually, there was. It was hot after you pissed on it. <laughs> I, I, I was eating one, wasn't I? <laughs> I was, was drinking wagon at the same time. Aye, because that's when I was doing it for real, and I was. Aye. That was very, very windy that night. <laughs> <laughs> I was in that wee. It was a new lager, it was an alcohol free lager. Oh, really? Right. I just kept drinking them. Why would they give you, is it because you have to drink a lot of it in retakes and stuff? Why would they not just give you real lager? And I couldn't you know, just drink another cup. Uh, in case that fix, you what? Aye. Well, you play a drunk man, and you are drunk. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean you can always you can always spot it. You, it's got a different fizz to it. Uh, you can uh, spot it. I mean, it's always, it looks a wee bit watery and a bit more fizzy uh, than you proper get, proper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People drink whiskey, which is tea and stuff like that. Aye. 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 Um, Aye. What, were, what were some of your favourite stories from behind the scenes? From what was behind the scenes? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yeah. This is where usually everybody's paused. Oh, God, there was like 15 years ago. All they're going, all they're going, all they're going, I can't fucking say that. I can't say that. I can't no, I can't see that <laughs> I don't, nothing specific. Apart from the fact that it was just loads of fun. Mm-hmm. There's still a lot of whinging. You, get, you can get a lot of whinging in, in, in the actor world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everybody was still, there was a. We weren't paid a lot of money, you know that. Oh, I need to do that. It was. It was uh, so, everybody loved what they were doing, otherwise, yeah. you could have done it. But, um, I think it was notorious that the worst money anyone had ever worked. Uh, <laughs> That's sad. Seriously. That's uh, sad. Um, um, and that, that featured in a newspaper, I think. Mm-hmm. That, that fact. Of, um, the fact that it was so low paid. Oh. And there's somebody from America to come out to see us and all that. Um, did you see in the newspaper recently, um, this podcast was in the Daily Record, no. talking about High Times, eh? We were Didn't in, know that. Aye. Basically, the Daily Record had covered what we're doing, um, yeah. and the hope that... We're we trying were... to get season three made. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do. Just to... Yeah. This is... It was a, a new bunch of actors. <laughs> nope. No, no, no. 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 no this is... Uh, real to life, which uh, High Times is very much a real to life thing. Actors age, people age, so yeah, just it's, it's going to be a. Hopefully, it'll just kind of pick up where they would be now at this point. But it was good. So, so these wee questions, where do you think Tex would be now? This is just so we can tell John here. <laughs> <laughs> right, but for, <laughs> the, 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 the great thing about what we're doing here is we're kind of trying to 
highlight a show that needs, you know, it's something that shouldn't be sat in a dust. I think, you, I think showing it again would be a good thing. Even that would be a, a <coughs> start. Like I said, it's, it is on the STV player, but there's could, no... Well, they could show it again, mm -hmm. considered there's very few sort of that, Well, that's what we, we mentioned that in the actual ah, exactly. article. Said that in the article. All the good stuff that, that <coughs> was around like still game during the fat, yeah. you've got the, what's the other one? Burniston and stuff. Yeah. They don't tend to make it anything like that anymore. And we are missing that good that good Scottish gritty laugh out loud kind of series. And now more than ever, when everybody's at home and needs something to laugh about, right? Yeah. You know, High Times. And I've, I've said to so many people, go home, check out High Times. Everybody that's watched it has come back to me and be like, bloody brilliant. I'm glad. How did I miss it? Do you know what I mean? It's the same. I've never had anybody go, ah, I checked out, but it was shite. It's just not a thing. Do you know, Do you know the, what I mean? The problem is they seem to be kind of, they're, they're devoting so much time to making dross, like absolute tripe that I would just where people can't even be in the same room and it, it's just like make this quick get out where they could just go listen why not why don't we dig out something yeah. that's already there and yeah like, I, think, I think I think IT deserves a second chance I would yeah 100% yeah. maybe yeah. yeah that's again it's something that we're hoping it hoping that the, the daily record exposure might kind of help as well um, I know that John Rooney would 100% love to do it. Absolutely. I mean, he's already said it. Everybody we've spoke to so far has all said that they would 100% be down for it. Uh, he said, John, John Rooney had said after speaking to us that basically it kind of let a wee spark under his arse. I think the text would be living in the South of France. South of France. <laughs> uh, do you know what? <laughs> do you know what? The cost of El Sol. I could see text. <laughs> I like, was not El Sol. Right, I could see. That that just, just say that a wee bit closer to the microphone. Uh, he's on his seventh wife now. <laughs> and she can't speak a word of English. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Perfect for text. <laughs> you could just imagine it, right? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Uh, right. And, and it's good as well because everybody will have moved on in age as well. So it'd be quite amazing to see where their lives end up. I, I've, on the previous episodes, I've kind of gone into a bit about how I would love to see them. Um, kind of come back together and there's there's a way that it could be done especially the way John Rooney writes this stuff where it could be something amazing and if everybody was just to check out the original it'll be the real folks home taxi there and he patches up <laughs> <laughs> Still delivering Chinese. <laughs> but you're not quite there yet. Obviously, no, I, I think I probably know the way to make me know. No, I don't know. <laughs> no, I mean, I think it would be quite cool to almost have that reunion kind of thing. Um, I mean, it, it, was, it was a BAFTA winning show. That's right. Obviously, and it's something that normally. That was a good thing. Hi. <laughs> Let's right. go. I'm just there's going to ask you. There. There's a story. The floor is yours. <laughs> It's literally his floor. Fucking <laughs> hell. <laughs> I think I had to walk along a wall with my hands at the end of the night because I couldn't have a walk. <laughs> my agent, I found her the next day, carried me out of the house. She's tiny, <laughs> tiny. <laughs> From a taxi, it dropped me on the floor. <laughs> my ex wife thought somebody, I think somebody, that she could do something like that before. I mean, I killed her agent. Literally carried me and then just dumped it. Everybody that night, wow. Well, I had some good stories there. Uh, they were saying, um, I think you, you and McGregor or something had won and he wasn't there. And John Morrison was like, Where is he? <laughs> 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 All right. All right. Just a good, a good uh, piss up for an award. Just nuts. Uh, I mean, the, the, sh the show won quite a few awards actually. Eh? I'm not sure, I think. Uh, well, that, that, I think that's the one that John Rooney's most proud of. Uh, that's right. Because that was quite, yeah. a, quite a big No, he was, that's right. I had to go over that to see that. Oh, I mean, it's, it's something, it's just a, the universe of what High Times is, is just something like that. Um, and that, you know, here's how we kind of got talking about High Times. When we had Stephen on the show initially, um, and he, he talked about it, we actually had him back on to talk about other things. So we put a, a you know, a wee post to all our, all our listeners saying, if you've got any questions for Stephen about anything he's worked on, give us your questions and we'll ask it for, we'll ask it for him. And the number one question people ask is, why was there never a series three yeah. high times? And you know what I mean? That, that kind of speaks volumes as to how, how much people wanted that, you know? And I, I, people, people could kind of say, you know, oh, it's too long, I'm too old to play. That's a load of shite. The good thing about high times is it was real and it was real people. Real people age, so I think we could really, we could, we could it'd be interesting. That, you know, it'd be a great opportunity as well, fabulous. And again, for the quality of George's writing, mm -hmm. yeah, 
and all the actors, all, all you guys on it as well. I mean, look at look at who you a huge talented bunch. I mean, name one person on that show that that did they hold up to to the story or to their own end, you know? Yeah. It was you all about a talented young bunch of people. And Stevens went off to do stuff. Paul. I mean, look at everybody. There's so so many talented. John people. John described Alan Cafferty as like a Scottish Peter Sellers. Said he was a genius. Um, mm. Again. Really hoping to get to speak to him at some point. Mm -hmm. um, he, he reminded me of that of James Dean sometimes. James, James Dean? James Dean, but James Dean could behave quite extremely. Mm -hmm. uh, in an extreme story. Mm. Um, if you look at his early work, he's doing things that other actors wouldn't do. Mm -hmm. Alan kind of done that. Yeah. She's pretty amazing actor. So. Ah, I think I did do. She knows that it tilts in his head and the, the mm -hmm. hair thing. Mm -hmm. Bye. So, so sometimes he would just like he would mumble a line instead of saying it, mm -hmm. kind of, and it would just work for for the scene Aye. and stuff like that. And uh, like I, I happened to see the episode of Still Game that he was in the other day. I'd forgotten that he was in an episode of Still Game. He was the the waiter that they had, and it was when they went to the town for their posh meal, um, <laughs> and they didn't want to pay for it. And uh, he was the waiter. It was like I'll sort of three boys, and then just before he tore, tore up the bill, he got <laughs> the sack for smoking in the kitchen, and then you know, like 140 quid down. <laughs> aye, 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 really good. It's a memorable, that's a memorable scene. It's, still, yeah, it's one people remember. Yeah, it. But it was, it was funny. Just when I was watching, that, I was that's fucking Alan. I had no idea. So somebody won't buy it. So I think I'm just pointing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. Um, aye, Alan's a really he's really talented, and I think Jake as well. That 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 role is perfect for him. There was a a very soft. Like you want to get, you want to sit down and give him a cuddle. <laughs> it's kind of vibe to him. Aye. I like as well. He had these wee moments where he kind of shout back at Rab, and, and you could really feel it. And you know what? Another thing, of of all the 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 scenes in High Times, and that I keep going back to it being how real it is. Do you remember that scene where Cora is she's looking for Tracy's phone to try and find out where she is? She's proper worried. And the bit where Frank says something, "Have you checked yet?" And 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 the way she just launches her voice at him. Man. That's something that, that happens on a regular basis with a wife, man. Uh, real life. She's like, I've had a rocket jet. It's like, you don't see that in River City or, or EastEnders, do you know what I mean? But you, there you see something that's very real to life. Aye. Yeah. Yeah. Again, just goes back to John's. Mm -hmm. John's and, and you guys' ability to pull that off. I have been allowed to, though. I yeah. think I've been allowed to work like that. Mm -hmm. You can't always. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can imagine. Aye. Um, I mean, it took years for the second series to come out. Um, but was it filmed right after the first series? But then it was a year between, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Was it a year between? Well, I, I, I thought it would be a bit longer. Mm. See, I just remembered something funny that happened when I was doing High Times. <laughs> something funny. <laughs> that was for filming for two weeks. How did that work again? I had a holiday booked. I asked, I said I would cancel it again. They were going to fly me back from Portugal to do my stuff and then fly me back to the holiday, which was a strange one. Right. And then they said, well, oh, actually, just shift when you're doing the job, but do you mind not getting a suntan? <laughs> so. <laughs> I totally forgot about it. So I went to Portugal and then when I came back I went straight to filming but I don't take much of a time. Mm -hmm. You looked quite tanned in the show like. I kind of did. It's the second one I wanted to watch it. Because I had to wear pale makeup. That <laughs> <laughs> was a slightly... Oh. I did get a wee bit of a time. Uh -huh. And I had to get a kind of bit of pale makeup. So I looked a wee bit done. <laughs> done up. <laughs> I mean, I need yeah, to look back at that again. Oh. I need to look back at that actually. <laughs> the second half of the second series. Oh, right. You can look at the doing glamours just back to Portugal. Yeah. You also know what I said, the last episode of the second series, I had an enormous tie. Right. And one of my eyes had to get millions of makeup on that. <laughs> Is that about when you had syphilis? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go go there. <laughs> that was a, a storyline that I remember. I'm in a chat about as well. <laughs> I'm sure, uh, did John mention that actually? What? That, that you you were speaking to him at the time, just like, well, you can't even fucking give me some fucking shouting to me in the street. There's something else to start with actually. <clears throat> uh, it changed to something. <laughs> oh, God. Come on, Jake. Yeah. Was, it wasn't that one. Nah. It wasn't right. It was herpes. Herpes. 
Well, with a like six point style, right? Just <laughs> 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 put some porridge on your mouth and let it dry. He's going to just be syphilis instead, you know. <laughs> Please. Uh, uh, she's changing something, she says, I mean, that was really good. Hey, thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> Changed it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the good, the good news is he didn't actually have it. It turns out that it was just exactly. a lie. That's what he said. It's not like it's that you haven't got that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got for the couple of weeks off. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're, see when you're cutting your cut, I mean, you obviously will deal with the public daily. Do you, how often do people recognise you for high times? Not so much. Okay. Uh, is it more maybe Riverside or something like that? It was for a bit, but I mean, even that, I didn't have the beard in Never City and stuff like that. I, I, I have a beard most of the time, I didn't have right. a beard in Never City, I'm talking about it. <laughs> very short beard. Um, um, it was very unlikely. Cause see, to be honest, I, if I was walking by in the street, I'd probably have to take a second look. Now, uh, just with your hair being longer now. Uh, that sucks, we'll look down here. Nice. Usually just cropped. Ah, uh, 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 but. Uh, but, uh, somebody says I look basically like an actor, I, mean, I wish I had it when I was acting. <laughs> <laughs> You've got the Clive Russell I was just going to say that. that. Ah, that's my outlander look. <laughs> uh, right. That's in the hope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we actually, we, we spoke to Clive Russell. He's a great big guy, isn't he? Really he's nice he's a giant. He is absolutely he's a giant. He's not quite as big as Big Innes is supposed to be. Ah, yeah, I know. He, he's big. He is massive, but he's uh, uh, tall and broad. Such a real nice yeah, guy. Okay. He really was nice to us. Uh, he, gave us he gave us a lot. To, even, even when we finished, it was just a quick interview we did with him on camera at, at a convention. Mm -hmm. And even once we stopped the camera, he stood and talked to us. For he was really interested. He, he just talks away. Uh, he just talks <laughs> away. <laughs> I mean, he did come in with a to smoke a cake. Yeah. I mean, but, but after that. <laughs> but he, he was a really nice guy. He was really interested in what we are doing with the podcast. So we've kind of made sure it always keep that going. So we'll probably catch up with him another. But you and him kind of, you could play brothers. You'd be the uh, brother Jack. <laughs> Jack. Jack. <laughs> right. No 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 fat of that like just, <laughs> no just fat. keep digging man it's smaller. <laughs> Obviously not. <laughs> so looking back on the show, I mean would you say that's ranked up there with some of your favourite projects they've worked Absolutely. on? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And the other, my other favourite one is that one that people don't see, which is good short films. Ah. You know, another thing yeah. in Scotland people make a lot of great short films mm -hmm. and they don't really get a platform. Uh. Mm -hmm. You get festivals and that's yeah, pretty well, much it. Yeah, well, I was in the festival in Palm Springs, in, you know, in LA, and it was in Claremont for Rome, Boulder, Colorado, that kind of thing, but it was never so dear. Yeah. Apart from a private screening. But that, I, you know, I'm not just saying it's because of my film, but mm -hmm. there's so many good short films in yeah. Scotland, and they should be screening them. Do you know what? I think we should actually, we actually, I don't know if you're aware of this, but from where we're from, we actually partner with a local cinema. It's okay. not owned by a big conglomerate or anything. So Just a wee private cinema. We actually get to screen. We've been screening movies from our childhood, Never End the Story, Labyrinth Falls, and we make money for this cinema. We make no money off it, but we make money for the cinema because of yes. local. And we're bringing our audience there. We're just trying to keep a local cinema going because it's not something you get, right? Where's that actually from? That's in Bathgate. 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 Right. So we do have access to a cinema all the time. We've used it already for many different things. Jeet and Matt came over from LA, we filmed that there, we sold out two screens twice. Um, so we'd, we're in good standing with that kind of thing. You know, and I was just thinking, what the amount of short films that's gone on? We should do like our own wee kind of festival of short films mm -hmm. um, and, and make it available to the public where we screen. Because John Rooney, Steve McCall, they've all done yes, really, have. really good yeah. short films. And you know, what? imagine you, you know, it's Saturday, you've got nothing to do, cinema's there, Come along, pay six, 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 seven quid, and maybe meet some of the actors and the directors yeah. that that done it. I mean, sure. I mean, you could show ten short films is about two hundred minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, it, and on the, at the festivals, it's usually so six, seven mm -hmm. films at a time. Sometimes a bit more. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're in there for the two hours or something like that. Mm -hmm. Some short films are ten minutes. I mean, it's, it's a very length. Yeah, for sure. You know, honestly. <clears throat> So I mean, it could be something. And speaking of that same kind of setup, we have a plan to do a live reunion of the High Times, where we get the cast and, and stuff like guys like Davey and um, Carolyn and Justin, um, <coughs> reunite them together on stage uh, with the 4K cinema screen. Maybe play a couple of episodes. Uh, where it's sort of an ultimate fan experience for everybody in Scotland that loved High Times <laughs> to come, right, and meet you all. <clears throat> Not only that, though, but the fans get to witness 
you guys being together in the same room talking about high times, so, right? right. <laughs> hey, quit your jibber jabber, right? <laughs> and uh, everybody so far is up for it. Um, I mean, the tickets will go and sit, it'll be, it'll be a ticketed event and we can sell merchandise and stuff. But um, would there be a huge money spinner? But it's a showcase for, for example, what he's done and it's love for the show and it'll, you'll be surrounded by people that are there to see you know what I mean it's, it's almost like a, a convention kind of feel to the high times and um, so once lockdown is over and people can be in the same room again at the capacity it needs to be and um, this is something that we're definitely going to put together that again was mentioned in the daily record so and you know if you'd come along and Join everybody. Everybody's agreed to do it. Absolutely, I love it. <laughs> no better pressure on you, but everybody else. Uh, everybody else has. So <laughs> you kind of did it. No, there'll be plenty. There's a bar in there as well. Oh, so, see, yeah. so you know, done. But um, that would be amazing for just, just you know, there's many different things we can do that night. You know, um, have, you know, just conversations like what we're doing now. But it'd be the audience that asks you the questions. Nice. Do you bring along the DVDs yeah. to get signed. Um, just we for eight by tens and stuff, you know, the pictures and stuff. So you make more money on the on the the fan engagement side than <laughs> what you would on the door. I don't get anybody would be bothered with that. But that, see, that's what I, I don't get that. Like I don't get that feeling from anybody. Do you know what I mean? Um, they just which, want to get which it. Which is strange it. when it comes to working with. It's just to, to get it out there again and showcase. The, the thing yeah. is, Scotland, when it comes to its arts, is criminally overlooked. A lot of the time, mm-hmm. um, in every aspect, mm-hmm. aye, and it's uh, and it's a travesty to be honest. I think it's something that, especially with, with, with a, lo- a local cinema, should try and we should try and push local, yeah, localish um, works. With, with regards to the short film industry, years and years ago, <coughs> when I was young, you used to get a short film before your main feature mm-hmm. in the cinema, yeah, quite often get a little, mm-hmm. you know, sort of short. I'd like to see them doing that again uh, with mm-hmm. Scottish short films in Scottish cinemas. Mm-hmm. It's obviously good quality and broadcastable. Yeah. <clears throat> um, 10 minute, 12 minute film before the, the main film, because most of your time is used up in the adverts, of course they still need to be there. Yeah. yeah. And the yes. trailers, which we love, can it's be short film, well, locally made or whatever, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's a that's a bloody good idea and it's something that we could definitely take to Yeah. Because this is a it's a like you said, it's not a chain cinema. This is they, they can make they make their own it's rules to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. In fact, it's what, one guy owns it, I think he lives in Kirkcaldy or something. But yeah. um, it's locally run. Um it's but a I, cinema. Yeah. It's, it's, it's actually a converted cut. Basically, it's a converted used to be a church. church. Yeah. It used to be a church. So you go in and it's literally like what a church would be. You know, like that scene in that's Black and Blackout, yeah. right? Imagine that but like <clears> all darkened and Perfectly set up like a 4K cinema screen, uh, the couches, so it's a homely feeling. Yeah, you know, it's like a home away from home. And we loved it when we went to see see some movies there, Jordan and I. And we were like, right, we can use we, this. We, we knew that it wasn't doing well because it's up against it. The View Cinema, which is not that far from it, dropped their prices to kind of undercut. And they couldn't drop their prices based on what they need to keep operating. So we were like, you know, we've got a bit of a local following. Um, and we're enthusiastic about it. So how about you let us select the movie or let our audience select the movie they want to see, we get the rights to show it, and then we bring them along and we kind of do a bit of a presentation for it. That's and fabulous. and we've, done, we've done that for, what, six, seven times now? And each I'm time they've times. made a good killing. We've done it with G-Tom Mac from The Lost Boys. We screened Lost Boys, had G-Tom Mac come and perform the song live, <laughs> signed autographs of them. They made a killing of it. Yeah. Absolute killing of it. Um, it was a success. It was in the newspapers as well. I mean, we've kind of we've we've really tried to help a local business, and in return, it gives us a place to take our audience. It's not just you listen to us and then that's it. You know, we like to kind of engage with everybody, and that's why I think High Times is such a, a a beautiful piece of Scottish TV. That if we could kind of engage our audience with that and build a bit of love, then you know they'll tell their friends, they'll tell their friends, and maybe just maybe we'll get something more of it. I think that what people used to say was it was more of a cult following we mm-hmm. had. Yeah. For some reason. I mm-hmm. think because of the time it went up. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It definitely yeah. was because of the content. The, the, the reason that it's not uh, where it yeah. should be. It's not, it's not to do with that or uh, other performances. It clearly has to be, like for us, it's no, it's no often something decent gets past us, right? <laughs> I mean, we're, we're forever watching shite. 
trying to find something decent. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's, it's, it's no often that something gets passed us. And the fact that we had to really dig to find that was like, wow, something like that should be quoted. You know what I mean? I say to people, if you haven't got a clue, uh, it's, it's, it's yeah, uncanny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, like, like I said, I never had a clue about it until the first time we had Stephen on. That was March. Mm-hmm. And That's amazing. I had no idea. Yeah. The thing is, that, that that was out when I was in my, I think I'd have been about 19, 20. See, that's going to be perfect for that age. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's been targeted, mm-hmm. perhaps. Absolutely. And now as well, though, I mean, I, I still think it would kind of hold up with, mm-hmm. with a part, of, even yeah. if you show the old episodes now. I, I don't think it, it's too dated. No, no, apart from the, what you said was uh, Paul's hair too. <laughs> and the Paul's hair. And the mobile, mobile phones and stuff like that. That's that's what kind of shows at this age. Mm-hmm. And maybe the, maybe just the camera quality at this point. There is mobile phones in it, isn't it? Aye, aye, it's just, they're just old. Aye, flip, flip phones and uh, just phones in bricks, in you know, like <laughs> 30, <laughs> Nokia 3310, <laughs> stuff like that. Aye. Um, but other than that, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's the writing that keeps it at a point where, the, I mean, there's... I mean, there's, it's just, what's, what's the word? Anachronistic? Is that the word? Anachronistic. Anachronistic yeah. problems, but they're very, very minor. Mm-hmm. And it's just with stuff like the internet, and it's like clearly dial up they're using stuff like that. It's, it's just a technological thing. How can thing. you make a film without people having mobile phones? Mm. I think you're the great films that they have mobile phones I mean, or computers. Aye, Home Alone would have been fucked. such an essential. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Mum, you're listening. All right, wait a minute. Moses <laughs> uh, Stephen actually said, Stephen McCall said to us that sometimes if you just don't acknowledge a phone, you don't just, just just don't ever pay attention to a phone, then you just assume the phone's not a thing. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Because he was in that movie, uh, Lonely Place to Die. Yeah. And he goes up to the mountains, and oh, of course the phones are you think it's signal up here. But that's one thing that he had said that you know if you just don't acknowledge phones. If a tea falls in the forest. <laughs> that's it. That's it. And, and even uh, Ka- Caroline, Caroline had said that as well. So a lot of writers just now are wanting to set things back in the nineties and eighties to avoid having to deal with social media. Well, what it does to your storyline, for instance, is mm-hmm. you've sorted, you sort everything out. Uh, yeah. With the phone. Yeah. You know, somebody's stranded, as you say, sort of lying inside. Mm-hmm. Pick the phone up, say, or send an S, you know, GPS. Uh, <laughs> send the GPS. <laughs> but, uh, it's, you know what I mean? It's uh, uh, <laughs> send it off you, like. <laughs> so, it's de- I mean, it, I think it's definitely something that, I mean, it's something that we're trying to do is to, to get it a bit more attention, and mm-hmm. hopefully, depending on how things go, we could maybe convince John to... Oh, no, John's game, maybe. John's game. Yeah, it's just okay. convincing the people that may be able to... To make it work. Caroline I mean, still loves it. So. I, I, absolutely. <laughs> she she says one of the best things she worked as well. And that's another thing. We can ha- continue to tell everybody sends their love to you. And that's just as they do it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think works. it's great that you're doing it actually. Not just from the point of view that uh, it's, uh, there's a possibility that there would be a reunion or, in a screening, but just to sort of uh, give it recognition, I suppose, mm-hmm. it cool. helps as well. Absolutely. And then, no matter how small or Whatever it is, right. it deserves it. Doesn't it deserve to be set? Gala does. does That's it? so yep. true. That's so true. I mean, we feel blessed that we are the ones that are able to do it. Because you know, I mean, if it was me, I'd have went with someone far, uh, far more up the pole than us. Like, but the fact that now a fan, like someone, can watch that and go, because like, I watched it and I'm searching for anything on it. There's, there's no other content, even the bloopers and stuff. There's nothing. So now at least if someone watches that and they Google High Times, the first thing they're going to see is this series of podcasts where I was talking about the actors, uh, talking to the actors about what's, you know, how they came to be a part of the show, really just dissecting everything about it and just having a good old laugh about what that show was. So, you know, uh, for me, like, I wish I had that to listen to, but it's even better than <laughs> I actually get to do that, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that, that's kind of been the, the kind of fan service from it. And the, there are so many other people out there that at one point, maybe say six, seven years ago, probably would have been like, you know, where do I find more of this? But because there's nothing, they're just like, right, kill. It's just something I watched now. Do you know what I mean? But I just think, with, with the recent media coverage of it, and this show's actually doing really well, people are continuously downloading these episodes and saying that they're enjoying it. People that, just people we've never interacted with before, saying, what was it, someone actually said, uh, someone actually commented and was like, oh, I would love to see them bring back, was it, it wasn't high times, it was, and they called it something else. Tate Hyman. No, it was, uh, <laughs> they, they basically called the show something else, and then someone else 
come in. It was like it's actually high times and stuff. A lot of <laughs> people used to say we we you know, that high road thing. Right, because uh, it was quite a similar name. <laughs> uh, That's a good point. Uh -huh, um, it'd be great. It'd be great. Just take the high road became high road. Aye, I think it did. It did. Hi, it did. Um, again, it, it, it's it's something that's going to stick with us for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. um, it's still watching it over and you over again. Bringing memories back that I've, I'd forgotten to tell you the truth from oh, wow. the chat. Well, I mean, it was scenes and everything. Oh, nice it's nice. Though, you know, ho well, hopefully, it's, hopefully, it's nice memories. Oh, you know, right. um, it's. I know they are. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it still holds up now, and I think we just we're going to keep pushing it as far as we can. Absolutely. And, uh, and we've yet to do something and fail at it yet. I mean, failure's coming <laughs> for us, right? But but everything we've set our mind to, we've put enough energy and passion behind it that it's Good. came to fruition. So hopefully, this will be the same. Eh? Hopefully, hopefully, can can you see why not? We've certainly got the talent for it. <laughs> For sure. Like you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have a very good job. Oh, yeah. So I um I mean you've no I think your last IMDB credit I think was two thousand fourteen. Is it have you just stopped acting now or are you, are you Um I think I didn't make a conscious decision as such. I think after River City I I wasn't chasing it. Mm -hmm. I think my agent said she wouldn't put me up for anything else because I had to do updating my photographs. I still had dark hair in my, my oh, photographs. Yeah, right. And I was like, yeah, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll never get around to it. Mm -hmm. I'm still represented, but I mean, so I'm not going to put up for work with music, but I'm not bothered. Mm -hmm. I think, <laughs> I felt, I only wanted to try to do decent work. I didn't want to go sit in auditions for a driving a car commercial or a, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. I, I think what I, what I used to say was on a good day acting with a good script feels if you could change the way people think or mm -hmm. you could change the bloody world. Uh -huh. On a bad day you just felt really silly and quite stupid. It feels right. if you were pretending to be something you weren't and you feel like that's not good. Mm -hmm. You don't, you don't enjoy the process. Yeah. Aye. Um, I, went, I, went, I was going to do a, a film a year ago, I think, for the students, which I was really interested in. I was going to play someone with uh, oh, Huntington's disease. Oh, I've heard of that. It have been a real challenge. Um, and I researched it a great deal and went to visit a couple of people with the disease. It's a student film, we were going to get paid for it then, but I was really, I was right into it. <laughs> the day before we were shooting, uh, before they said that someone with Huntington's disease came along, they were going to play it. Oh, he just seems more fit to the part. Won't, won't be as good as me, either. <laughs> but, uh, oh. I'd love to have done that, actually. But it was, yeah. that was a real chance, was something like that. I write it, of course, as well. Yeah. As I say, I wrote that film directly, mm. that was a long time ago. But I still have scripts on the go. Aye. And I'm probably more interested in that mm -hmm. than direct. Short film. Just need to find a good production team. Did he? <laughs> <laughs> uh, aye. Well, now watch this space. Aye, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so, aye, um, this has been, it's been a blast. John, Thank you. Um, thanks Thank you. again. Thanks for giving us your time. Thanks, appreciate it. Um, and we're finally seeing where the Comerford special actually <laughs> actually happens because we heard so yeah. much about the Comerford special. It's finally, takes his salon. Do you know what? Do you know what? It's missing is a big rug, a big rug, and some red wallpaper. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think you need a, a bull skull somewhere. Or something, you know. <laughs> Um, but really nice no, it's a really nice place. So this is in Gibson Street in Glasgow. Yes. Keep an eye out for uh, Alice Rocks. Uh -huh. uh, this is my mum's name. Oh wow. My mum's maiden name. Rocks. Is it? Aye, aye. That's her. That's my mum's maiden name. See? I, I, just, I, I just thought it was a catchy name. No, that's there you go. My mum's. <laughs> mum's name. Uh, so yeah, if you're passing by, jump in for a haircut. Exactly. And ask for the Comerford special, get 15% off. <laughs> oh my God. Use our discount code, Jim Jab 15 uh, uh, mine, don't do that. Uh, but, uh, John, thanks very much for your time, it's, it's been great. And there we go, that was our conversation with John. Um, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, huge thanks to him for uh, allowing us to come into his, his much, uh, much praised 
would you say? It was a it was being highly praised by everybody, yes. the Comerford special. So for us, it was cool to kind of go in there and, and see it and meet Tex in the flesh. But aye, absolute cool guy. And uh, make sure you guys leave a, a review to let us know what you thought about the show. If you guys ever want to get a haircut, head down to Alice's what? <laughs> Alice Rocks. Alice Rocks, that's his mum's name. <laughs> so I make sure you head in there uh, and get Tex to cut your hair. Go and ask for a Comerford special and you'll get 15% off. <laughs> no, you will not You fucking won't. <laughs> but make sure that you go in there and say, I got told that if I asked for a Comerford special, I'd get 15% off, right? Tell him he, that. <laughs> he, he is going to come to us in like four months and go, guys, you owe me £4,000, 15% <laughs> discount, you fucking bunch of wallopers. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, head in and ask for the Comfort Special. Or just go and get your hair cut and chat to your hairdresser about his amazing time on High Times. If you've not checked it out, check it the fuck out and make sure you share this show so that everybody gets an opportunity to hear about how good this show was. Um, coming up on our next episode, we will have Stephanie Robinson. She was Tracy in High Times and she is a huge talent. I'm really looking forward to speaking to her because her character was... It was her character was was deeper and more sophisticated than what it, what it seemed to be anyway. So I'm really looking forward to chatting up, catching up with her, and seeing what she's up <laughs> to these days. What the hell are you laughing at? Uh, really, look, really looking forward to chatting up. Uh, I mean, I never said up. chatting up. <laughs> you Fuck. fucking. Would, would, would you care? I'm Rab Campbell, fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can. <laughs> but, uh, so make sure you tune in next week, uh, and you guys will be able to hear a conversation with her. As always, check us out on Facebook, Twitter and whatnot. If you've got questions you want to ask the cast, go ahead and submit them to us. You can also find everything we've ever done or are going to be doing at www.jibberjabberpodcast.com. And so, on YouTube. Bye, go aye. to fucking YouTube. Please Please subscribe, start, man. Start going to YouTube. <laughs> but even if you've listened to this podcast, right, do us a wee favour. Go to YouTube, go to every video we've ever done and watch it for at least four minutes. Right? That will really help us out. And also subscribe. So no, we, we, it's the subscribers we need. <laughs> We've already got the match. And then watch everything. That's it. <laughs> no piggy. <laughs> but so once if again, a, if you've got a spare day or two, you know, <laughs> just, 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 just jump on there. Subscribe listen to these episodes everything. via YouTube. Just listen to these episodes via YouTube. We'll make some coin and it means we can get some more production value to the show, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, for as always, I have been Skaven Schwells and you have been Jay Mackamas. <laughs> Stephen Swells. That's Stephen Swells. <laughs> uh, okay, yes, he has been Kevin Wells. I have been J Mac. Thank you for listening to this week's podcast, and we'll see you next week. Bye bye. Wide a happy ever afters never seem to last.